um, honourable members, good morning, honourable ministers and staff, members of the press, you are all welcome to today's sitting. Thank you very much. Um, honourable members, I welcome you all to today's sitting of Monday, the 28th of February, 2022. Today is the beginning of the final sitting of the last ordinary session of this fifth legislature. In light of this, I wish to sincerely acknowledge and thank all honorable members of the fifth legislature for building consensus around critical issues that have been tabled before the assembly during the last five years. Honorable members, you will all agree with me that this assembly has witnessed the transition from virtually the dominance of one political party to a more polarized assembly with multi-party representation. As the mandate of the fifth legislature draws to a close, it is therefore appropriate to bid farewell to honorable members, staff, and the nation at large. While doing this, I will equally attempt to review some of the progresses made so far, as well as the challenges faced by the fifth legislature. It has been a very busy and eventful five-year parliamentary term for all of us, particularly the new members who have had much to learn and adapt to. First and foremost, honorable members, on a personal note, I wish to thank His Excellency the President of the Republic, Mr. Adam Abaro, for nominating me as a member of the National pa Assembly under the powers vested in him by the 1997 Constitution. I will always be grateful to him for the privilege given to me to serve my country in this capacity and in this noble institution. Equally, I wish to register my profound gratitude to the entire members of the Assembly for electing me as a speaker of the fifth legislature. This was so huge for me and my family for two reasons. First, being the speaker of a parliament as a woman in a new democratic dispensation when parliament and the country was at the international timeline was indeed challenging as well as rewarding. Secondly, my family and I, for my family and I, it is historic and delightful that my father was once a speaker of the parliament for two terms during the first republic. My family and I are forever grateful. Honorable members, it is important to highlight progress made by the fifth legislature on certain critical issues as well as the challenges faced. You will agree with me that the most important procedural document which sets our parliamentary structures, procedure, and processes is the standing orders of the National Assembly. Significantly, the fifth legislature, with support from the Office of the Clerk and the CPA UK, undertook a major review of the standing orders from 2018 August to September 2019, when the new standing orders were adopted. Some of the key changes in the standing orders include, one, the legislative process. For example, a minimum nine-day period was imposed before a bill could be passed at all its stages, whereas previously bills would usually be considered and voted on by the Assembly within a day. This was a huge achievement for our parliamentary democracy since the dawn of the democratic dispensation in 2016. In fact, I understand it is the first comprehensive review of the standing orders of the National Assembly since 2001. We are proud as a National Assembly of the high degree of satisfaction with the standing orders which were revised in 2019 following a thorough review exercise 
to bring the assembly's procedure in line with international parliamentary standards and practice. Now, on the stewardship of the various chairpersons and, and the invaluable support of the Office of the Clerk, the performance of our legislative oversight and accountability functions as enshrined in the 1997 Constitution and the Standing Orders of the National Assembly were exceptional and encouraging in a fledgling democracy. Honorable members, during the course of proceedings of this fifth legislature, Parliament was able to consider, scrutinize, and pass numerous legislation that touch on the lives and livelihoods of the people and the nation in general. According to our records, about 53 bills were enacted from 2017 to February 2022, including the annual appropriation acts. Prominent, sorry, prominent among these are uh, one, the National Human Rights Commission Act 2017, two, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission Act 2017, three, the Constitutional Review Commission Act 2017, four, the Forest Act 2018, five, the Maritime Zones Act 2019, Six, Women's Enterprise Fund Act 2020. Seven, the Petroleum Commission Act 2021. Eight, the Persons with Disabilities Act 2021. Nine, the National Assembly Service Act 2021. Ten, the National Health Insurance Act 2021. And most recently, the Public Service Pensions Act. 2022, amongst others. Honorable mm -hmm. members, on an other note, Parliament during the fifth legislature witnessed the tabling of the Constitution Promulgation Bill 2020, in other words, the CRC draft constitution by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice in 2020. However, the document stalled in Parliament at the second reading stage. Notwithstanding the setback, the government may decide to come back to Parliament to continue the process of promulgating a new constitution for our Republic. The legislature also witnessed the tabling of three members' bills and enacted two of them, whilst the other one table failed to pass through the second reading stage. This is unprecedented in the history of the National Assembly as only one member's bill was ever introduced and passed in the National Assembly. Honorable members, Parliament has also facilitated and confirmed appointments to the National Human Rights Commission, the Office of the Ombudsman, and the Judicial Service Commission. We wish them all success in their endeavors within their respective institutions. And at this juncture, I also wish to make special acknowledgement, honorable ministers, the permanent secretaries, and head of departments and agencies whose efforts and collaboration have helped us accomplish this much. We have also successfully concluded some important businesses of parliament, like for example, the state of the nation addresses and consistently considered and approved the annual national budget over the years. We have also considered and deliberated on several motions, personal explanations, matters of the day, ministerial statements, and other parliamentary matters. This is testimony to the fact that Parliament is a national forum for public consideration of issues of concern to our people. And on a significant note and pride for this fifth legislature is the proliferation of parliamentary questions to honorable ministers for oral answers. Our records have revealed that not less than 150 questions were processed for each ordinary session compared to not more than 10 questions in the entire period of the fourth legislature. 
This is again unprecedented in the history of our parliamentary democracy as a legislative tool of holding government to account. This was highly symbolic, designed to demonstrate the mandate of the legislature as the people's representative, that is the people's parliament. As a parliament and office of the speaker, I have hosted several international parliamentary and other delegations from strategic partners in the international community, including, amongst others, high-level delegations from the People's Republic of China, the Republic of France, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Republic of Senegal, the Republic of Kenya, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association UK branch and the Africa branch, the International Republican Institute and International IDEA. These and other delegations have interacted with parliamentarians and staff as a component of parliamentary democracy in pursuit of our strategic objectives in bilateral and multilateral fora. Honorable members, I wish to enumerate some of the main strengths of our parliament as a handing over legacy to the next legislature, that is the sixth legislature. During our term, executive legislative relations have improved since the last elections in April 2017. This is illustrated by a constructive and cordial working relationship between the majority and minority leaders of the National Assembly. The National Assembly enjoys substantial support from development partners, including CPA and CPA UK, WFD, all UN systems in the Gambia, the International Republican Institute, Article 19, International Idea, TICA, and of course many others. The National Assembly is equally active in other parliamentary meetings such as ECOWAS, ACPEU, and the Pan-African Parliament, that is PAP. Several exchanges, for example, to Ghana, Sierra Leone, and the UK have also exposed honorable members and staff to contemporary parliamentary good practices. The 2017 elections saw a very high turnout, that is, sorry, turnover of new members. But a successful induction program was carried out with the assistance of international partners on the operations, practices, and procedures of the assembly. Given that elections traditionally result in high turnover of members, a similar induction program is necessary for the sixth legislature. Honorable members, our friends from the media, will agree with me that the sittings of the National Assembly, that is including voting and the proceedings of committees, were open to the public. The media was granted unrestricted access to all proceedings. Despite limited ICT infrastructure, the audiovisual broadcasting infrastructure has been improved with live streaming of sittings of the National Assembly on all the Assembly digital media platforms, providing digital quality live broadcasts and a replay service that enabled users to watch, link, or to download videos of Assembly proceedings. The National Assembly is also developing and populating a new website to be known as the assembly.gm. Though challenges remain, there is evidence that committees are becoming more assertive and effective when conducting oversight. Notably, the Standing Committee on Defense and Security provides oversight of the security sector and intelligence services, a sector which was a no-go area for preceding legislatures. This equally demonstrates that the security service is accountable to civil rule and authority. Honorable members, in accordance with the new standing orders, procedures for budget and financial scrutiny have equally been strengthened. The Finance and Public Accounts Committee, that is FPAC, and the government must now agree to a protocol on the administrative arrangements for the scrutiny of the annual draft budget and other related budgetary matters. 
Furthermore, the ethical regime of the National Assembly has also been toughened. The new standing orders provide a mechanism to ensure transparency and responsibility for the conduct of parliamentary matters, including adherence to code of conduct and disclosure of interest. For example, Standing Order Clause 135 establishes the register of interest of members of the Assembly, which will be made available for public inspection. Honorable members, the excitement of our successes or achievements cannot distract us from our challenges. Parliament's role in scrutinizing the reports of government and public institutions, as well as the reporting of some committees have been challenging due to the overwhelming and competing workload of the legislature. As the saying goes, the work of parliament can never be exhausted. Hence the reasons why legacy reports are prepared and the next legislature will need to look critically and carefully at the issues and the challenges being faced by government entities. Parliament has a role to appraise the performance of government. The following are some of our key challenges. <clears throat> One, the infrastructure of Parliament is inadequate. There is lack of office accommodation for both members and professional staff. There are limited meeting rooms, four meeting rooms for about 18 committees. There are few technical challenges, including no media room or conference center. And I hope that the next speaker and parliament will engage our partners and, of course, government, Minister of Finance, to invest in a new annex building to cater for this infrastructural deficiency. Unfortunately, although my office tried to engage the assistance of the Turkish Agency for International Cooperation, that is TICA, on this matter, it did not yield any success. This is this is a project, as you all know, I ideally wish to have happened, and I also wish the next leadership of the National Assembly will take it up. On institutional matters, the existing professional staff are nonpartisan, and additional staff are being recruited to improve on the capacity. The Hansard unit is understaffed, but considerable effort is being made to clear the backlog in transcription. FPAC has the mandate to examine the audited accounts of government and the report of the Auditor General on these accounts. The Public Enterprises Committee that is SPEC provides oversight on state-owned enterprises. Both committees have inherited a backlog of unaudited accounts but attempts have been made to ensure that government institutions and state-owned enterprises are up to date with their audited accounts in a more timely and effective manner. The National Assembly Service is responsible for providing public education about the functions of the Assembly and its committees. Some initiatives have been undertaken. For example, the recent Open Day Forum organized by the Office of the Clerk together with WFD Gambia serves as a public lecture for stakeholders on the working of Parliament. The Office of the Clerk has now institutionalized this as an annual event to better bring Parliament closer to the people. Honorable members, would we, we would be remiss if we fail to note with sadness, the passing away of two honorable members and former clerk of this assembly during this legislative term. Honorable Demba Song, former National Assembly member for Nyamina West, and Honorable Fakeba N.L. Kohli, former member for Kiang West, and Mr. Dudu C. M. Kebe, former clerk of the National Assembly. We remember these fine individuals and their contributions with affection and profound sense of loss. We pray that their gentle souls will rest in perfect peace in their natural field house. Honorable members, <coughs> sorry, noting that this is the last plenary ordinary session of the National Assembly as campaign for elections to the sixth legislature begins next week, 
honorable members who will then be reconnecting with their constituencies and electorates for electioneering. Honorable members, I urge you all to campaign peacefully and smoothly. And I wish you all to return refreshed and ready to continue the sterling work started by this fifth legislature. I have served as Speaker of Parliament. I'm sorry, to, to have served as Speaker of Parliament has been a great honor afforded to very few in our country's history. I must admit that the job of a speaker is not an easy one. In fact, I consider it the hardest job in the land, and I can tell you this for free. The expectations of whatever holds, of whoever holds the office are infinite compared to resources that are available. Honorable members, Parliament as an institution, through the help of the authority and the office of the clerk, we have repositioned and upgraded the parliamentary service through institutional capacity buildings, recruitment, and relevant trainings. We are very proud that we are leaving Parliament today in good and safe hands as far as institutional memory and capacity are concerned. The employees of the Parliament services are very good people and partners we are all proud of. For Parliament and parliamentarians in general, the future of Gambian progressive politics lies within your hands. I therefore wish the new incoming legislature and members all the best in the great task that lies ahead. There are always long dark nights of the soul. But believe it or not, morning does come often sooner than you think. And again, honorable members, on this note, I wish to thank the honorable deputy speaker, honorable Mamadou L.K. Sani, the honorable majority and minority leader, honorable K.K. Barrow, honorable Samba Jano, and all veterans and doyens of this assembly in the persons of Honorable Sidi Ajata, Honorable Halifa Salah, Honorable Muhammad Magasi, and Honorable Manjabu Samusa for their support, guidance, and dedication to the Assembly. Equally, I wish to register my thanks and gratitude to the various chairpersons for their contributions to the work of the Assembly. Honorable members, I am equally indebted to you all for your cooperation and dedication to duty over the period. My thanks also go to the clerk of the National Assembly, Mr. Mumadu ACC, his deputies, Mr. Daniel Cardos, Mr. M. Buba M. E. Jata, and Mr. Khalifa M. M. Bai, and indeed all staff of the National Assembly Service for their unflinching hard work, commitment, and dedication. Our best wishes to all of them in their pursuit to providing better services to the sixth legislature. But honorable members, on a special note on chamber and table support services, I wish to register my special thanks and gratitude. My special thanks, gratitude, and recognition to the clerk, Mr. Mamadou ACC, and his deputy for legal and procedural matters, Mr. Khalifa M. M. Bai, and the table of his team for their extraordinary service to me and the Assembly over the years. Honorable members, I am not being biased or discriminatory here, but the clerk and table of his staff have been my immediate assistants with a mountain of challenges which they have endured with professionalism. Equally, I wish to thank and recognize the services of my personal assistants, my orderly, my guards, and my drivers. I am indebted to them all and staff of the National Assembly again. It is a singular honor to serve in the high office of Speaker of the National Assembly. Of course, I have no interest in being here for the sake of being here and that the only point of being here was to make a difference for the betterment of our country. In some instances, I succeeded. 
In others, I did not, but such is the nature of life. But honorable um, members, when history is one day written, detached from passions of our time, perhaps we will be remembered as a fifth legislature that we performed well and did raise the bar high as far as representative democracy is concerned. And here, I would like to quote Dr. Kwame Nkrumah when he said, in quote, those who would judge us merely by the heights we have achieved would do well to remember the depths from which we started, unquote. And to conclude, honorable members, nothing has brought me greater joy in my tenure as speaker and head of the legislature than the smiles that I have seen on the faces of our staff as a result of securing financial and operational independence of parliament. I am glad that together as a parliament, we were able to save the future of parliament as an institution by the passing of the National Assembly Service Act 2021. I will also continue to support the great causes of nation building as members of this assembly also know very well that I am a passionate Gandhian. To honorable members of this parliament, both friends and the chair challengers, and I can confidently say they are spread across both sides of the chambers, I thank you all for the privilege of having worked with you. Whatever has been said in very chaotic instances sometimes is now in the past. I bear no malice against anybody. Life is too short for that. This is parliament is a great and it is a great institution. To my family, thank you for your support and endurance despite all the challenges associated with the job who mean a lot to me. In the days ahead, honorable members, members of the media, I will be spending some time with my family and I would ask my good friends in the Fort Estate, that is the media, to give us some privacy as I would cease to be a big, big figure. And so having said all that, on this final ordinary session in the National Assembly, and as is now recorded in the landmarks for occasions such as this adjournment debate, it's really been my honor and privilege to have served this institution and my country. And I thank you all for your attention. Thank you.